This is the Rundown on I-24 News. I'm Khaled Ben David. On today's program, Sudan becomes the latest Muslim state to agree to ties with Israel. But what sort of relationship will the countries have? We'll take a closer look. We'll hear from an Emirati official on the potential cultural connections between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. And while most U.S. Jews are supporting Joe Biden, Orthodox Jews are rallying behind President Trump. We'll explain why. Until last year, Sudan was one of the nations most hostile to Israel. But this weekend, it became the third Arab or Muslim state in the space of three months to agree to normalize ties with the Jewish state. And officials here and in Washington express confidence that others will follow in its wake, with Oman cited as the most likely to come next. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today updated the cabinet on the latest developments in these new relations between Jerusalem and Khartoum. Soon, an Israeli delegation will meet in Sudan with their Sudanese counterparts in order to discuss cooperation in many fields, including in the area of migration, which we are discussing. I wish to thank again President Trump and his team. Their role was most important in achieving these three peace agreements. As Prime Minister Netanyahu alluded to there, the diplomatic breakthrough with Sudan was initially announced by the White House as was the Abraham Accords with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. But the African nation is quite different from those Gulf states. And as our Middle East correspondent Adi Koplowitz explains, so likely will be its relationship with Israel. Israel and Sudan are about to end the state of war and belligerence they had been in for decades. A first step in what seems like a normalization of ties between the two countries. This development is a result of ongoing pressure from the U.S. State Department on the Sudanese leadership. In exchange for normalizing ties with Israel, Sudan will no longer be considered a terror-sponsoring country, meaning international sanctions imposed on Sudan will be lifted an important boost for Sudan's crushed economy. The agreement that was announced yesterday is a victory for the Sudanese people after they have suffered for a long time in isolation from the whole world. The head of the Sudanese Transitional Council, Abdul Fattah al-Burhan, is the agreement's main advocate in Sudan. But his role is set to be temporary until elections take place. Sudanese politicians argue that the military council doesn't have the mandate to make such decisions as cozying up to Israel. Establishing relations with the Jewish state is a very controversial issue in Sudan. The normalization with the Zionist entity is a violation made by the Prime Minister and the Chairman of the Sovereignty Council as they went against the decision of the forces of freedom and change. Haidar is a member of the Pan-Arab Socialist Ba'ath Party, a traditional hard opposed to Israel and currently one of the loudest voices against normalization in Sudanese politics. Sudanese demonstrators took to the streets on Friday, rejecting any relations with Israel. Just over a year ago, Sudan went through a military coup, and since then a military transitional council controls the country. Controversy over the council's authority has increased since the reports of a normalization with Israel started to emerge. As an Israeli delegation prepares to leave for Khartoum, it seems the challenge is not the gap between the two countries, but rather the inner dispute in Sudan regarding relations with the Jewish state. And joining us now from, from Washington is Ambassador Richard Schmira. He's the president and counsel of the board of the Middle East Policy Council, and he is the former U.S. ambassador to Oman. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for joining us. Well, let's Let's talk, uh, start with that country that you know quite well, Oman. I'm sure you're seeing reports saying that it's possible in the coming months, maybe even in the coming days, maybe even before the U.S. election, Oman will announce or the U.S. will announce uh, Oman and Israel establishing relations. How likely do you think any of this is? Well, it would be hard to anticipate what the timing might be. Uh, but I do believe that the sentiment in Oman and among Omani leaders would be to establish normalized relations with Israel. 
Oman actually did go down that path some time ago, uh, which was disrupted by subsequent events. Um, so I do anticipate that it will happen. I just don't know what the timing will be. And of course, they're under new leadership since the uh, death of Sultan Qaboos earlier this year. So in a sense, maybe the new leadership is also continuing to, to get its feet on the ground. But certainly Oman would be a country that I would expect will seek normalized relations with Israel. Right. Uh, I want to ask you the, about uh, the impact of the normalization of ties between Sudan and Israel. One of the things that uh, some analysts had noted was that Israel was never in any kind of host real hostilities or war with the UAE and Bahrain. We knew they had sort of secret contacts over the years. Sudan is a completely different kettle of fish. This was a country that was intensely hostile, even taking, you could argue, action against Israel over the decades. What kind of impact does that precedent, do you think, set for other countries? Uh, well, I think there are two things to look at. One, Sudan itself has changed. Uh, it's no longer under the uh, leadership of its former dictator. Um, and so the potential for Sudanese policy to change uh, has been there. Uh, and then I also think that, in general, um, the idea of the countries of the region coming into normalized relations uh, with Israel uh, is a positive contribution uh, to reducing tensions and potentially uh, providing more opportunities for prosperity and security and stability in the region. So I think there's a different dynamic now than there had been under those times that you described. Uh, and it's one that I welcome and that I would hope can be built on. Right. Now, uh once again, this announcement of the establishment of ties between Sudan and Israel was actually made not in Jerusalem, not in Khartoum, in Washington, in the Oval Office. We have seen the uh, Trump administration, the White House, take a much more proactive role than previous administrations. They played a key role taking Sudan off the terrorists, agreeing to sell F-35s to the UAE in promoting relations between Israel uh, and uh, its Arab and Muslim neighbors. I want to get your impression of that, this sort of new role that the White House is taking here. Well, it has been very much a different approach. I, I agree with you there. And, and as you say, a new role because of that new approach. Uh, for each of the countries, I think there's been a reason that they've been they, they've sought to go down that path. And for Sudan, as you've mentioned, uh, it was very important for their prosperity, for their future, uh, that they be taken off the list of U.S. state sponsors of terrorism. Uh, they had to take a couple of steps to do that. One was to put money in escrow for the victims of some of the terrorist acts that Sudan has been associated with. Uh, and then in this case, the Trump administration also sought to have them agree to normalized relations uh, with Israel, uh, which again, as I say, I support. But it could have some potential problems within Sudan in terms of public sentiment. But I think those are all things that can be dealt with and I think ultimately will, will turn out to be a positive development. And now, Mr. Ambassador, we mentioned Oman, another country that people are talking about again in just in recent days is Saudi Arabia, what some people here in Israel call sort of the big fish for Israel diplomatically in the Arab world. Uh, how likely do you think Saudi, a lot of speculation, they may wait to see who the next president is and in a sense want to make that move uh, sometime during the, the transition or certainly after the inauguration of whoever gets elected on November 3rd. Well, I think you're absolutely right to, to note that a lot of this is happening very much on the eve of a U.S. presidential election. We go to the, we have our election in 10 days. And so, yes, I can see a country like Saudi Arabia wishing to kind of hold back at least a bit to see how things fall out. Uh, it also may be they have a special role in the Islamic world. It may be that they can't see themselves as being at the front of this uh, development. And so they may feel they have to, to wait a little while longer. And there's probably also an issue of, of in terms of leadership, the generational uh, difference between King Salman uh, and the Crown Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, so those may all be factors right. that would influence when uh, Saudi Arabia might decide to take such a step. Right. All right. Former Ambassador Richard Schmira, thank you for joining us on The Rundown.